Welcome to Crossiums. In this video, we are going to make a circular pattern from scratch. The first thing we will do is create a ring rail. We select the size 8 and confirm. We press right click to repeat the last command and confirm. We'll activate the gumball on a snap and grid a snap. Now we select the ring rail and we will move it 2 mm. Now we are going to create as many reference points as gems we are going to place. In this case, there will be 11, so we will divide it in 23 points. Select the curve, type divide in the command prompt, press enter and select the number of divisions that we want. In this case, 22. Now we will join both rails with a curve using the reference points. Go to Curves and select Blend Curve. Select both curves, change the display mode to Shaded to see the created curve. We move the point 1 and 2 to the reference points. Now we are going to generate the curve leaving the first point in curvature and the second point in position. Let's go to the front bipod to make sure that the curve doesn't go under the rail. We can disable the grid snap to move it easily, and we can modify it until we see it to our liking. Back to the perspective bipod, and we click OK. We repeat the command doing left click, and we join again as we did in the previous one, but this time we'll do it inverted. Select the first in position and the second in curvature. Once we have it, we confirm. We go to Tools, select Profile Placer, select the rail, confirm, right click to repeat the last command and select the same curve and confirm again. Now we'll do it differently. Right click, select the rail, open the drop down position and click on Position. Now we'll select where we want to add it and we will give two clicks to add two profiles. Now what we're going to do is to rotate two profiles. To do this, we'll select the profile and we'll click on the blue curve of the set axis of the gumball to rotate and press shift and drag to rotate it 90 degrees. We go to the other profile, right click on gumball, relocate gumball and select the bottom center position of the profile. As direction, we will select the top center. Another click. As you can see, now the gumball is in the right position to rotate it as we did in the other profile. Click the red curve, press shift and drag to rotate. Now it's ready, so we are going to group them in groups. We select two profiles and from the drop-down edit, we go to group and repeat the action with the other two. Now we can edit the profiles at the same time. We select the group of profiles, click on the edit button at the top side. We will change the profile to 5 and the size to our taste. I'll put the width at 1 and the height 1.5. Repeat the same with the other group. But this time, select the profile 6 and the height 1.7. We'll put the same width in both profiles. From the drop-down tools, we are going to create an auto-sweep. 
of its curve and profile giving enable to cap and leaving it at zero. Right click to repeat the command, select the rail and the group of profiles, enable cap and slide it to zero. Confirm. Now we'll do a mirror of two sweeps and select horizontal, vertical and diagonal. So confirm. We are going to group the parts of the sweeps again from the drop down, edit and group. Now that we have it grouped, we select it and go to the polar array command in tools. We are going to select 11 copies since we divide it in 22 points with the rail in the beginning. We confirm. Now we are going to create an outside ring rail from rings drop down. We will modify the size to make it symmetrical on all sides and activate proportional. Select the second profile and it's ready for the side. We'll leave it at 2.4 and confirm. Select the outside ring rail and we will move it with the gumball to the side. We are going to create a blend curve from the drop down curves. We select the two rails and we go to the viper front. From here we will move the points 1 and 2 using as reference the divisions of the beginning. In options we will select the two points in curvature and we will move it point 1 skipping one point to make it more stretched. Again, you can adjust the curve as much as you want. We confirm and go to the perspective. Now we'll make two profiles, one at position 1 of size of 0 0.8 and select the profile number 1 and confirm. Repeat the command with the right click and modify the position to the opposite end. Select profile 1 and size 0 0.8. Then confirm. We will create an auto sweep of the rail, taking the respective profiles, enable caps and select height 0. Now we will make a vertical mirror of the auto sweep. So go to mirror, select auto sweep, and select mirror vertical. Then confirm. Select the two sweeps and make a polar array of 11 copies. Now confirm. As it is parametric, we can at any time edit the ring so we will make the height a little bit lower. We will hide the polar array to create two metalon curve. So we select metalon curve in the jewelry drop down. Choose the rail and modify the width to 1 and the height to 0 0.8. We'll select the profile number 2. We confirm. Right click, select the profile above and add the same properties than before. Confirm and click on Show Polar Array to see how it looks like. 
Let's set it the top part and make it a little higher, leaving the top profile at 0 0.9 and the width 1.2. Edit the bottom metal curve and set it to 1.2 width. Now we will grab the polar array with the metal sun curve. Then go to a mirror and make a horizontal mirror. To finish, we will create the gem. We select gem and ring, choose the princess cut, and reduce the size and lower the girdle. We rotate. 45 degrees and we add the size of 1.8. We are going to lower the girdle until it is store liking, leaving it at 1.7. With the gem selected, we are going to create the gem cutter. From the drop down cutters and from options with the scroll button, slide down we will reduce the bottom taper to 0 0.4. Then confirm. We create the prongs on gem from the drop down gem settings and we will adapt it with the desired size and profile. We'll modify the diameter to 0 0.6 and the height to 0 0.3. We'll select the profile 10 and move the gem inside to 0 0.25 so that we have a good visualization. Then confirm. Finally, we will create a polar array of the prongs and the gem. We select the gem and the prongs. We select 11 copies and confirm. We'll do the same with the gem cutter. Once we select, we confirm. And now we are going to create a Boolean difference. We select the polar array, the ring, and the gem cutters. As you can see, they are not grouped. So we are going to group it before we select the polar array with the gem cutters. We go to edit and group it. Now we are going to tools, select Boolean difference, we select the polar array of the sweeps and the gem cutter as object B. We wait and confirm. Finally, from material selector, we select the two materials to change them to gold. We'll do the same with the gem, changing it to ruby. Change the display mode to render to see the grounds and select the black ground. We finish it by viewing it from ray traces mode. We can hide the layers just clicking on other layer and select hide. The best part of these rings is that we can modify them once they are finished. For example, we are going to modify the size of the string. We select the ring rail to edit. And we are going to select a bigger size. As we can see, the whole ring is adapted to the desired size. Finally, I will make a couple of edits to make it look better. I'll lower the gem a bit by moving the vertical girdle. And I'll raise the middle profiles. I will edit file placer and select the move vertical at 0.10.
and I will rotate one degree. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and other social networks. See you in the next chapter.